the title of my sermonette this morning um, is Forever Young, and I hope the point and meaning will be apparent soon. Uh, but for those who grew up during the 1980s, and this is a little, little bit playful here, I, I will be planting a bit of an earworm, and I'll apologize in advance uh, to those that grew up during that era. And the song, as you may recall, Forever Young, and you may be thinking of either Rod Stewart's version of a Bob Dylan song, and they're a little different, but they're, they're about the same, or the group Alphaville. I, I think that my wife Shelley and, and Miss Rank may recall that version a bit more than Rod Stewart's version, and you may look at it later on, but that song is going to be in your head for a bit, and I apologize for that. However, uh, the Rod Stewart song is uh, perhaps an anthem of good wishes, if you will. And again, I think Bob Dylan actually wrote the song, and uh, Mr. Stewart may have changed it a bit, but I'm just going to read a little bit of it to you. I'm not going to sing it, and for that you'll thank me. May the, Lord, may the good Lord be with you down every road you roam, and may sunshine and happiness surround you when you're far from home. And you may, may you grow to be proud, dignified, and true, and do unto others as you would have done to you. Be courageous and be brave, and in my heart you'll always stay forever young. And of course, while we don't endorse the proud part of this, there's a lot of elements of this, uh, thanking God for, uh, as we grow up strong in, in his eyes, that we, we embrace. And what a wonderful sentiment to ask as a blessing from God Upon hearing these words, forever young, one might typically think of the reference is that it's to the physical state attributed to the younger people, most, most often. Smooth skin, hair, and hair with natural color to boot, strong muscles, and few infirmities, which is something we all, we all um, pray for and, and pray for the day when that will be uh, the factor for us. Not all are so blessed in, in this life, uh, but many are. And still my point is not in these wonderful, wonderful physical blessings which do come from God. We know that. But my point lies deeper. And to get into the deeper elements of this, let's turn together to Psalm 71. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Psalm 71 and in verses 4 through 6. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. Continuing on in, in verse 6. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. And for some reason, this, this scripture makes me think of the, of the, the leader of um, Ukraine and the people when I think of delivering them from out of the hand of the wicked. And I know we're, our prayers are for them as well. We know that David did indeed trust in God as a youth. And though he sinned before God and man, he repented and he knew where to turn and place his allegiance. We knew and perhaps have learned the hard way that when we go it alone and trust in our humanity, we're sunk. And we've spoken about this many, many sermonettes, many sermons, especially in the recent, in this past year. And perhaps we're not sunk immediately, but it catches up. When you think about it in, in terms of history and further history, older history and, and even recent time, even Hitler and Mr. Putin have had their victories in this earthly realm. And I know that this is frustrating to all people that live through this, and you just feel like you wish for uh, righteousness, and that's not, that's not a part of this world very often. But we recall vengeance belongs to the Lord, to God exclusively. Speaking of Mr. Putin, since I brought him up, all the nonsense about him wrestling younger soldiers or bears or whatever he seems to think he's going to do while bare-chested 
What is that all about? Isn't it his attempt to hold on to some aspect of his younger being, his strength, musculature, and of course, at the heart of it all, power? To Mr. Putin, youth equals power. It is interesting to see a, a clip of him taking a dive, and he's uh, in the very Eastern uh, Catholic and Eastern Orthodox tradition of crossing himself before he's jumping in the water, and it's signifying that he's got a belief in a higher power, and yet his values don't, don't illustrate that. The esteemed general from World War II era, Douglas MacArthur, was quoted as offering this in relation to youth. You are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your self-confidence, as old as your fear, as young as your hope, and as old as your despair. We can see that people who are going it alone without God are likely to put on quite a show to show their immense power and their reach. And in the end, truly, before God, they are all like Goliath. Let's turn now to 1 Timothy 4 and in verse 12. Again, 1 Timothy 4 and in verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Well, this is quite a different example from most people who bluster about their power. What Timothy is showing us is exactly what we should be doing, that we should be an example in God's eyes. Do we do this? Do we all do this as believers, as followers of God who've been called? Of course, we all fall down. I know that I can do a much better job of this with myself, but we all have to examine ourselves, and isn't this the season that we're coming into to do that? Not that we shouldn't be doing this all year long. Find your youthful faith that you had before you were corroded by many aspects of this world, and trust in the power of God, not in ourselves, in our so-called power, or our so-called leaders. They will only lead us astray. I think we can see that in very clear example these days. In Matthew, we see yet another um, good example of what we should be doing. In Matthew 18, we'll turn to Matthew 18, verses 1 through 5. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name, receives me. That must have been incredible to be with Jesus in that, that moment, every moment. In God's eyes, we must be forever young, innocent and trusting in the Father. We must obey him as well as we should obey our parents in our lives when we are young and as we grow, for their example to show us the way. God does not need sophistication from us. I think this world tries to convince us that's what we somehow need, and it certainly gives us the, the um, formula for that. He does not need for us to attempt to show that we are powerful. God knows he created each of us and what skills he imbued us with, talents and attributes, and he wants us to use those and perfect those. Uh, to the best of our ability, and he wants us to work through him to perfect ourselves. We do not need to wrestle bears for God. Most young children do not learn about pride until they begin interacting at school or in society in general. Unfortunately, the world teaches us behaviors that are not necessarily in God's kingdom, the plan. God wants his creation to succeed. That's very clear. And he wants us to be confident in what he, he provided us with. 
but we need not cross the line to prideful vanity. And we've, several of us have spoken about this in, in recent months. And as a final scripture, we are reminded to rely on God as we did when we were young and had very little of our own abilities. As the world spirals, and we can see that these days, we must cling to this and recommit to God. And we're going to end in Ecclesiastes 12. And I'll ask you to turn there with me. Ecclesiastes 12 and in verse 1. And there's much more in that chapter to read, but I think this is powerful. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. That is p- powerful thought, especially in light of what we're living through now. In this way, in following God, we can remain forever young in his kingdom.